Howdy, folks. Time is precious and oh so fleeting. Yet we have so many interesting people to meet and remarkable things to see. Join me, won't you, for the ultimate Mike Polk Jr. show. It starts now. Boom. <laughs> Don't be scared, everybody. It's just me, Mike Polk Jr., not an owl. I was just having a little bit of fun. I've always enjoyed the Halloween season. I guess when it comes down to it, I'm just a big kid at heart, even though I'm now 28 years old. So we had a question bouncing around the office this week. What was your favorite Halloween costume that you have personally ever worn? It was a tough call for me because it came down to two amazing options. Last year, I dressed up as an uncanny version of Jareth the Goblin King, David Bowie's character from the 1986 fantasy film Labyrinth, a costume that many people, including my own girlfriend, described as more than a little disturbing. But in the end, I decided that my personal favorite costume ever was the year that I went as Bernie Lomax, the deceased titular character of the 1989 comedy film Weekend at Bernie's. This costume had so many elements that appealed to me. Casual comfort, 80s pop culture appeal, thrift store affordability, and perhaps most importantly, an excellent build-in excuse to not talk to anyone anytime I didn't feel like it for the entire evening under the very plausible guise of staying in character. It was truly the perfect costume, and I think I'm gonna bring him back this year. But that's just my example. We wanna see your favorite Halloween costume that you ever wore. Just go to our What's New Facebook page and comment underneath this story to submit. Our crack team of costume experts, which realistically will probably be me and a 19-year-old intern from John Carroll University, will evaluate all submissions. We will then select our 10 favorites and share them with you on Halloween. Again, just go to the What's New Facebook page to show us the magic. And if you're already on the What's New Facebook page and watching this segment here, well then look at you. You're one step ahead of everyone. Congratulations. Now show us the goods. Let's see some costumes, folks, and happy Halloween. So let me ask you, what scares you the most? For some, it's things that go bump in the night. For others, it's a deep, impenetrable darkness. For me, of course, it's being socially obliged to attend a suburban barbecue and having to listen to basic dudes talk about golf and landscaping techniques. But for others, it's entomophobia, AKA the fear of bugs. Well, if that's your fear, you perchance may wish to avert your eyes as I am about to present to you one of the scariest reports I ever presented, the attack of the cicadas. Do you hear that? That's the sound of terror. Terror in the form of lots of bugs. I'm down here in Columbus where our state capital is overrun by a plague of cicada right now. I came all the way down here to find out what that's all about and to see what Cleveland can do to help. The Brood 10 cicadas have very much emerged and are currently plaguing certain cursed sections of our state and also social media where they're being hunted and eaten by their primary predator, TikTok video creators. It's like a chocolate covered raisin. But what dangers do they pose to Columbus residents? And more importantly, how do we keep them the hell out of Cleveland? For those answers, I turn to Metro Park bigwig, Tim Maloney. We're concerned up in Cleveland. You guys are overrun with this plague. I don't know what you did wrong as a city. Well, it's not a plague at all. We've been looking forward to this for about 17 years. Really? You look forward to it? This is entertainment to people in Cleveland. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I mean, listen to this. You hear nature's chorus going on and on and on. Cicadas, what do we need to know? Should people be horrified of them in the way that some people are? No, absolutely the exact opposite. The only thing they ever love biting is the leaves of trees. I think one of the reasons everybody is so freaked out is because these things look like space aliens. Oh, and they're big. I mean, for an they insect, are. they're quite large. According to Mr. Maloney, every 17 years, these brood X creeps emerge all at once, shed their exoskeletons like weirdos, grow wings, then immediately start singing. It is them trying to attract mates. They're trying to attract mates. Yes. That's right. That noise you're hearing is the mating call of a billion randy cicadas looking for love. To them, this sounds like Usher. Shockingly, when I asked these Columbus nature enthusiasts how they were dealing with the invasion, they seemed less than adequately horrified. Uh, you're not scared at all of these bugs? They're no. scary, right? No, no, no. They're wonderful. Yeah. They're great for the environment. It seems as though the icky trauma currently being experienced by these chipper residents has simply not yet sunk in. People are scared of these things because they look like little devil bugs. 
They do look pretty scary, but some people are also eating them, yeah. which is weird. I saw that on TikTok, a dude pouring cheese and yeah. munching on them. Perhaps they're in denial, unwilling to acknowledge the horror of the moment for fear of making it real. It was actually amazing. The colors are unbelievable. But having now personally experienced this traumatic grossness firsthand, we don't need this mess up in Cleveland. Keep this stuff down here. All right, cicadas? I can assure you that the cicada mess in Columbus is very real and quite nasty. And I didn't even have to eat one to realize that. This is Mike Polk getting skeezed out for 3 News. Ooh, scary, right? <laughs> Hey, speaking of scary, does everyone remember that worldwide pandemic from a few years back that I think we're still technically in probably right now, but don't take my word for it because I'm not a doctor? Now those were some scary times, am I right? We sure had to make some strange adjustments to our everyday lives, including to our beloved Halloween traditions. Take a look at the instructional video I made during the heart of the play, suggesting safe ways to engage in trick-or-treating. Hey folks, if you're anything like me, you love Halloween and you love trick-or-treating, but eventually you get too old to go trick-or-treating and everybody's like, aren't you a little old for this? At this point, it's time to transition from your role as treat receiver to treat distributor, which is far, far worse. But it's not without its charm. So how do we get treats safely to kids during a pandemic when we're supposed to keep social distance? I put my mind to it and developed several methods, most of which were swings and misses. After properly positioning my proxy trick-or-treaters, it was time to attempt my first method, <laughs> utilizing my niece's remote control car. All right, kids, get ready for some Halloween. Are you serious? Boy, this thing's bad. Unfortunately, my niece's car lacked the horsepower necessary to conquer even the mildest of obstructions. Come on. Sorry. God. Sorry. Oh, I am sorry. Halloween fail! Catapults have been in use since the 4th century BC, so I figured it was a method worth exploring. Sometimes, like, it's the old methods that work best. Iron Man, you look like a Milky Way man, am I right? Okay. Here's a couple of them. Say trick or treat! Okay, here it comes. Oh, boy. Sorry. Is that... Oh, no. This isn't gonna work either. I can't have him running out in the street for him. Halloween fail! I next experimented with a crude conveyor system intended to function not unlike a modern day ski lift. What's that? You want a Butterfinger? No problem. And then you do this. Now watch, here we go. Can't go too fast. I'm losing it! Oh boy. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Halloween fail! Humankind has long relied upon beasts of burden, like my sister's dog, Layla, for assistance. Okay, just go take that, see how it goes, take that to the kids. Here it goes, go get it. No, oh, take it over there. Go, come on. This would work if you were smarter. Halloween fail. Apparently, candy shoots have become a popular method of distributing the goods this year. Great costumes. And work it did. So, after rigorous experimentation, I wholeheartedly recommend the candy shoot method. We did it! Halloween success! It's fun, it's effective, and most importantly, it's safe. Yeah! Oh, kid, oh no. Happy Halloween. This is Mike Polk, disturbing my neighbors for three news. Hey, speaking of trick or treating, what sort of candy do you plan to hand out this year? The good stuff? or the bad stuff. Because if it's the bad stuff, why don't you do us all a favor and just leave your porch light off for Pete's sake. Don't waste these kids' valuable knocking time. As a quick primer, here's a piece about what I consider to be the acceptable and unacceptable candies you can hand out on Halloween. I hope it helps. Howdy folks, tis the season. When I found out that Ohio's favorite Halloween candy is apparently M&M's, I'm sure I felt the same way that many of you did. Surprised, chagrined, perhaps a bit melancholy. Don't get me wrong, M&M's aren't gross or anything, they're fine. I can tell you that I certainly wasn't pulled for this study, but if someone were to ask me which Halloween candies I personally prefer over M&M's, I guess my response would be most. Reese's Cups, Butterfinger, Snickers, Kit Kat, Nestle Crunch, Twix, Reese's Pieces, Milky Way, Sour Patch Kids, Nerds, Junior Mints, 100 Grands, and York Peppermint Patties, just to name a few. And this seems like a good time to use this platform for good, to advocate against some of the worst candies that inconsiderate people hand out to innocent kids on Halloween. So let it be known that moving forward, the following treats are banned. 
No more mallow cups, circus peanuts, Boston baked beans, Necco wafers, or black licorice. And that includes black licorice in all of its wicked forms, like black jacks or good and plenties where they try to disguise it. We see you. Now, I won't veto candy corn entirely because I know it has its passionate advocates, and I don't need that kind of heat coming at my inbox. But can we agree that candy corn shouldn't be handed to kids on Halloween? It should just sit in a dish on your aunt's coffee table so that those who wish to indulge can do so, but it's not forced upon anyone against their will. Good deal? Also banned, white chocolate, no. Wax lips, wax vampire teeth. Those gross little wax bottles with warm sugar juice in them. In fact, how about we just stop feeding kids wax in general? Seems like a good rule of thumb. Smarties, AKA sugar chalk, banned. Now and laters, never ever. And finally, Tootsie Rolls, invented way back in 1907. Good run, Tootsie Roll, but I think we've made some amazing advancements in candy technology over the last 114 years, and it's time to bow out. Take note, everyone, and enjoy your M&Ms, Ohio, you beautiful weirdos. Happy Halloween, folks. So what did you think? Are those the worst candies? Do you agree with my scientific analysis? Or am I, as many online seem to agree, a total moron? I was determined to find out. So recently, I decided to test the accuracy of my conclusions by enlisting the help of brave volunteer trick-or-treaters as test subjects slash taste testers. These are the results. Tell me what you think. Uh, no. Uh, 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 uh. Mm -mm. Well, I've got a treat for you, because I'll bet you like Boston baked beans. No. I hate beans. Oh. Kind of tastes like Snickers. It does. This tastes like Snickers to you. At times, it was difficult not to feel some level of sympathy for these brave volunteers. Kind of describe to me what you think of the bit of honey. Blech. How do I spell that? And there were moments where I clearly pushed them past their personal thresholds. It's good and plenty time. Do you want to spit it out? I don't like it. Explain why you don't like it. Uh, it's too chewy. Too chewy. That's generous. Have one or two or handful or whatever you want. It's like a really bad jelly bean. Boy, that's perfect. But throughout the ordeal, they remained stalwart, determined, and unflinching. If I had to describe the flavor, whoo, I guess I can't, I can't describe it without cursing. I'm really not even trying. You wanna stop before we get started? That's a good move. It seems like you're really wrestling internally. Nope. Mm. Wow, really? Mostly unflinching. It's like a Reese cup, but if it were mad at you. Well, in a good way or in a bad way? The chocolate tastes really stale. Yes, it's made that way. It is actually brand new, but it somehow tastes stale. How are we feeling about that? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. It's a no in the mallow cup. I was worried about this. Are you okay? Yeah. Should we call someone? Is she okay? Yeah, I'm can fine. Okay, nothing can happen to her if she had a mallow cup, right? You're good? <laughs> yeah. All right, there was significant flinching. Can Kay. I have a napkin? Yes, yes, absolutely. There we go. So we're good on the, we're done with the good and plenties. But this wasn't simply cruelty for cruelty's sake. What these children did, they were doing for science. It's like a wax bottle, but it's got some kind of like gross like juice in it. Mm. You don't want to drink what's inside that wax though? No. I mean, might be really good. It's not. And I feel pretty safe in saying this experiment was wildly successful. Do you think that that's something that people should hand out to people at Halloween? Not really. And you shouldn't hand out that or bit of honeys, right? Tell them to be better. Be better. Yeah, be better this Halloween. Thank you. Welcome. This is Mike Polk for 3 News, wishing you a safe, happy, and good and plenty free Halloween. So there you have it, folks. Turns out I was right, and that candy was gross. Well, we sure had some fun here tonight, didn't we? Or at least we kept you from being alone in the dark for a little while. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm back, I'm back. Don't be scared, everything's fine. You'll never be alone as long as you put this show on a constant loop. Happy Halloween, everyone. Join me again, if you dare. And then can we use a cool effect to make me disappear? Like a cool effect, something that looks realistic. Like from the Matrix movies. The early Matrix movies, not the new bad ones. 